Hello, and this is Rohan, and I had a slight change of plans, it looks like. I will be doing a commentator video for today. So, this is one of my childhood favourite games, and probably the most important game I ever played, Gran Turismo 4. So yeah, we're at the start of the career mode here. So, we need to buy a car. So, to do that, we're going to go to the used car dealership. As it says there, second hand car dealer, try to pick up a performance car at budget price. Maybe you can find an unexpected bargain and start free, second hand dealer, it's okay, I understand. For 90, 80s cars, late 90s cars, and early 90s cars. So let's go over some of the options I've been thinking about. There's tons of really amazing choices at your disposal. All sorts of different kinds of cars, although most of them are Japanese, so yeah. So I guess I'll go with some options I was thinking about. One of them was the Mazda RX-7 here. Because it's one of the most powerful, um... It's one of the most powerful, um, FR cars you can get. This one has 184 brake horse and yeah, it uses a rotary engine, which is cool. I'm just very familiarized myself with the control stuff. Another car I was thinking about also getting was the Nissan Skyline GTS here. With 177 brake horsepower. But yeah, see, they're 169 though, because um, of wear and tear, basically. That was also a pretty interesting option, too. But I think the car I want to go with is in the 1980s used car dealership, near the bottom. So again, there's like a large choices, like this Honda Accord here. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. There's a lot of cars in this game that I've only seen in this game too, which is really cool. But yeah, the car I want to actually go with is this one, the Nissan Skyline GTST Type M. This is also a really powerful um, FR car, 192 brake horses, it says there. And yeah, it looks pretty cool too. I do like this. Um, the R32 generation of the Skyline. It's not a GTR, but that's okay. Let's buy it. And we have to use it because it's basically our only option for a car. So there we go. But because it's an old car, what we want to do is we want to go to GT Auto. So we can wash it, we can oil change it, we can change the wheels or give it a rear wing. But yeah, all we need to do at the moment is give it an oil change. That's how you do it. <laughs> so there you go, and that will give it a little bit more brake course, which will make it much easier to do the event I want to do today. I just want to show off the Sunday Cup, I think. Maybe I'll also show off the FR Challenge if we have the time, but yeah, we'll see. And then while we're racing, I'm going to talk about why I'm showing off this game. <laughs> I kind of already talked about the fact that it is one of my childhood favourites, but I'll go into more detail about that. So anyway, let's go to the garage now. And I can show it off. See, now it has 215 brake horsepower, although it says that 212. We could also get some upgrades, but with this kind of performance, I think it'll be fine in the Sunday Cup, because the Sunday Cup is full of very weak competition. So let's go racing. In the beginner events, beginner races are currently being held. After you buy your first car, enter and aim to beat the rival cars. So let's do it. And like I said, we want to do the Sunday Cup because it doesn't require a license. In fact, basically none of the events here need one, so that's cool. Um, so there's a single race. Normal or sports tires are required. All cars are permitted, and we don't need a license. So let's go. So yeah, this is five races. That's why I feel like we're only going to be doing the Sunday Cup today. But yeah, let's go. We also do a preview to check what opponents are going to be face off against, but yeah, let's just enter. And here is our opposition at Ormring Mini Reverse. It's pretty easy opponents it looks like, so yeah. I can also go into the settings, but I don't think I can change that much. Because we haven't bought any, like, performance parts, so yeah. I'm probably not going to leave it as is. Now let's go racing. So, 
Another thing that Graduates of War has is that A spec thing. That basically kind of shows the difficulty of the race. It's only 7 points, it goes up to 200. So this will be an easy race according to the game. So let's talk about some other things too. I'm playing the PAL version of the game. The PAL version of the game changes actually quite a bit. Um, I wanted to go with this version because, well, it's the version I grew up with. So yeah, of course I want to show that off then. So yeah. <laughs> so like I said, it does change quite a few things. I think one of the more notable things at this point is that it actually changes what cars and used car dealership. So there might be some slight differences if you're playing the NTS NTSC version. So yeah, there's that. I'm playing this at 30 FPS because it's a lot more stable. At 60 FPS, well technically it would be 50 FPS because of the PAL version of the game, but um like I said, it'd be very unstable, so why not? I'll show off a video first. This is a lot more reliable for showing off PS2 games. And I probably should have done it much earlier, but that's okay. Because I doubt m not too many people are going to be upset that I'm not running at 60 FPS. But yeah. Just tell you, PS2 games are quite demanding for this little laptop, so yeah. At least recording them and playing them at the same time, so yeah. So yeah, I want to get the, that off my chest, but yeah, let's talk about why this game, why is this game so important to me? Well, yeah, I think this is the game that may be a gamer. And what I mean by that is, it's like, yeah, I think without this game, I wouldn't like games as much as I did, even though it is a racing game, first and foremost. Um, so... I think it's because, yeah, it's one of the first games I remember playing that I actually had some fun memories of. Um, I think that's one reason why. Remember, I played this game before I played any RPGs, plenty, any Pokemon games, or any Farm games. Stuff that, yeah, you should be more familiar with on the channel. Because I got into those series much later in my life. This is something I played during my childhood. A lot, uh, alongside other, you know, PS2 racing games. So yeah, there's that. So we win our first race. But yeah, we don't actually get that much money. Um, so yeah, having a car that's able to enter more events is helpful. Um, because yeah, this is an FR, I can, can compete in the FR challenge, it's actually after some upgrades, so yeah. Although, are we going to be able to afford any upgrades is the question. But anyway, so back to our talk about, see like I said, I played this game well before those. Pokemon was around the 2010s. And then Fire Emblem was like around 2019, 2020. So yeah, like I said, it's um, like I said, it's like um, you know, <laughs> it took me a lot to get into this series because again, I only played racing games on my PS2 back in the day, and then I migrated to the 360, which I still own <laughs> after all this time. See, so that's cool. So there we go. Um, so that's like, well, just a thing about my past. Because yeah, this isn't the first game I played. I think the first game I remember playing was Grand Chirism 2. Another Grand Chirism game. But yeah, you can probably tell that, yeah, the series does mean quite a lot to my early childhood. Although I don't play any of the games anymore nowadays. Unless, you know, I emulate the um, older titles. And yeah, I definitely want to try playing this game more too. Especially after um, I finished Grand Chosen 3, which I'm also currently playing on my PS2 emulator. Let's see at the start. Um, so, yeah. So, I kind of talked about um, some of the sentimental stuff. Um, actually, no, let's keep going. So, yeah, I think one thing I remember about this game, too, was that I. Sh um, I at my primary school, we basically had this thing called Look Who's Talking. Um, basically, you talk about something. You do like this like presentation about something. I remember when I was in like year 5, I did one about the Cadillac Sienna, which is a car in this game. I drove a lot. <laughs> you actually unlock it very early on in the game, which is also really cool, but yeah. Um, So yeah, that's one fond memory. Of course, I have a lot of other fond memories too, like winning endurance races and um, 
just, you know, making a lot of progress, finding out these new mysterious cars and stuff. Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> because, again, this game has an amazing... I wouldn't say amazing, it's just very... I mean, it is quite amazing. It has a very large car rust. I think it's like 700, 800 cars or something. It's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of content, and yeah, this game is massive. This game is even bigger than Persona 5, believe it or not. It takes longer to beat, at least, so yeah. <laughs> Like, I think my playthrough would be around 200 hours, or even more than that, potentially. But we'll see. <laughs> That's probably why I'm not going to play on the channel, because, you know, massive, massive game. And also, yeah, it is a racing game, after all. Even though, yeah, it is a very important game to me. But yeah, like I said, mostly childhood memories are why I think this game is important. And also, it's one of the first games I remember having, like, so many childhood memories of, so yeah. That is why it's quite important. Of course, there are definitely some other games that I consider quite important too, like Pokemon Heart Gold got me into Pokemon. Um, it wasn't the first Pokemon game I played, but yeah, it was... It was, like, um, the first I had so many fond memories of, again. So yeah, it's kind of important in that regard. Farm 7 would be quite important because it got me into Farm, obviously, so yeah. Because, yeah, uh, I played... that was the first Farm game I played. I kind of did talk about, and speak of which, yeah, I did kind of talk about my origins when I played, um, when I played the chapter 10 of Farm 7, so yeah. But yeah, let's talk about this game a little bit more, now that I talked about why it's so important to me, with all the sentimental values and stuff. It's a very solid game, it's a lot more realistic when compared to, um, its predecessor, Grand Theft Auto 3, the car handling is a lot more realistic, but it's also a lot more difficult as a result. We'll see how I feel about it as, you know, if I play this game a lot more, but yeah. Like I said, it's um not a super easy game as a result, especially uh, if you're trying to go into a race with Unpark Cup. At least, yeah, the upgrades in this game, which, yeah, those will really help. <laughs> You can obviously upgrade the car and make your life a lot easier in the races as a result. Um, but yeah, like I said, the car handling is definitely a lot harder when compared to Grand Theft Auto 3. Which is interesting because, yeah, I remember having more fun playing this game than Grand Theft Auto 3 as a child, so that's kind of weird. Because, yeah, you'd think that um, it'd be the opposite because I'd be younger, not as good at games, but yeah, that's just how it is. Um, so. So yeah, there's that. And yeah, like I said, this game has tons of content. I think that's another reason why it's very fondly looked back on. This You can waste a ton of time into this game. Or put into a ton of time in this game. Like I said, this game is probably even longer than Persona 5, which is one of the longest RPGs that comes to mind. Although there are definitely some other games that are... <coughs> there are definitely some other games that come to mind that are also really large, that was also RPGs, so yeah. Like, yeah, I remember that my first place ruse of Farm and Free Houses took forever as well, so yeah. <laughs> um, when I was, like, learning the game and also learning about the story and stuff, so yeah. But anyway, um... I think, yeah, another thing too is there isn't just the Racing 2, there is also License Tests. <laughs> They're very hit and miss in the series. But yeah, you need to do them to get to complete the higher tier events. But in this game, even though there's a ton of them um, that you need to do, you do get reward with the prize cup for just being them, and also one for getting silver in all the um, license tests, and also a, a car for getting all the gold. So yeah, you are definitely reward well for doing them, at least so there's that. And then, yeah, that's another thing too. This game is still really popular in the car community, or well, racing game community, I should be saying. People still really fondly look back to this game, even if, you know, they might not like the driving as much as Grand Theft Auto 3. I think no better way I can describe that than, well, what's happening this year. Because, yeah, of course, emulation has come a lot more, lot further in this game, and this game looks... can look extremely good on a very powerful system, so yeah. 
It's pretty um crazy what you could do with this game with a fruit emulation. Like it could definitely compete with modern racing games in terms of how it looks visually. And yeah, people are even trying to mod it too. Um to improve the user experience as well. And then yeah, there's another funny thing too. This happened there's two things that happened very recently in regards to this game. The first one is that some people discovered some cheat codes for this game. This game, by the way, came out in 2004, and we only found out about the cheat codes this year. So yeah, that's absolutely insane. And that just shows that, yeah, this game is, um, you know... Still, um... <laughs> this game is still, you know, being talked about. And then the other thing is, is that... Someone made a mod for this game that turns it into a randomizer. Randomizer, of course, are quite popular, especially in like the Pokemon community. I definitely played some randomizers myself with my brother in Pokemon games, so yeah. So there's that. Um, but yeah, what the randomizer does is it randomizes the prize cards you get, and yeah, I have definitely heard about some funny things that have been happening with that, so yeah. Um, but yeah, again, it just shows that, yeah, people still love this game and still want to do things for it, and yeah, there's some even more interesting mods coming up too. But yeah, it definitely goes to show how, like, beloved this game is. People still want to work on it with mods and stuff, with the emulator, so yeah. Like I said, yeah, this game, I feel like, yeah... If I say this game is one of the greatest games of all time, I feel like... I, I don't know. I feel like it should be, because like this game was an absolute game changer back in the day. And the fact that it's still relevant even now, I think kind of goes to show why I still think it's... You know, still a very important game. Um, like, yeah, this game, you know, still means a lot to a lot of people, you know? Even to myself, even though I've only started replaying it now, so yeah. But yeah, I do definitely plan to do a full playthrough of this, not on the channel, obviously, on my own time. I would love to show off on the channel, but only after I have a more powerful system. So I can emulate it and look, make it look a lot nicer, because yeah, this game deserves it. That kind of reminds me too, the PAL version is kind of more restricted. It doesn't have a progressive 480i setting. The NTSC version doesn't, of course, that runs as a PS2, so yeah. The PAL version is a bit more limited, but it is the version I grew up with. It also has some songs that are really important to me, which I'll show in the other video I uploaded today. That was originally going to be its own video today, but because I was really happy with how this game recorded, with that video I decided, you know what, let me do a commentator video for this. That will definitely lift up my mood quite a bit, so then I'll do much better with every 12 so yeah. So yeah. And yeah, like I said, I'm very happy that I'm getting to play this again. This game is still just as good as I remember it. <laughs> and yeah, definitely emulation helps out a lot with this game. A lot of racing games too. I think that's another thing too about racing games too. A lot of them end up getting like they're some of the first games to get emulated on their console. Graphics? It is because of graphics, because yeah, a lot of racing games are, you know... One of their selling points is that graphics are better and for worse, so yeah. Um, so then because of that, yeah, people want to, you know... <laughs> um, people want to try and improve these games, make them look as good as possible, obviously. I mean, that goes for every game that you emulate, but yeah, I think racing games, because graphics are kind of a big deal, I think, yeah, um, that's why, you know, that tend to be some of the first games you see emulate. RPG is kind of too, because, um, I think it's because they might be, like, they require less inputs from the player, I guess. So then they'd be easy to I mean, I'm not entirely sure about that, but yeah, that could be true as well. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, 
So yeah, let's see that. <laughs> so that's um, a lot of things I want to talk about. But yeah. I think another thing about the PS2 racing games as well is that they kind of show off the problems with modern racing games too. The problem with modern racing games is that they're too focused on... Um, they're just too focused on some very unimportant aspects in the grand scheme. Like, yeah, graphically speaking, they they still look, like, gorgeous. Like, a lot of modern racing games still look really good. Um, sure, there's, like, Drive Club. Drive Club came out, like, very early on the PS4 lifespan, and it's still, like, one of the best-looking racing games, which is saying a lot. But then also there's the fact that, yeah, not enough racing games have a good single player. They mostly focus on multiplayer nowadays, which, um, some devs are definitely trying their best to make an interesting single player experience, but I feel like a lot of them just can't do it anymore. Which is a shame, because the PS2 definitely showed that, yeah, you can make a lot of good racing games have a good single player, like this game and also the Tokyo Extreme Race, the games that I so much love playing. So yeah. But at least we have emulation and we can relive these PS2 games from back in the day, so yeah. Um, because yeah, again, if you have these, you don't really need the modern racing games as the problem as well. Because again, modern racing games are kind of flawed, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because I want to see the racing game try do better. But now it's kind of just kind of a shell of its former self, which is really sad. Because yeah, this is the genre that I grew up with too, so it's kind of just sad to see it in this like declining state. But at least, yeah, me playing the Tokyo Extreme Racing Games definitely made me feel a lot happier, because yeah, that was a racing game I never got to experience in my childhood. And definitely shows that, yeah, there's still a lot of racing games out there during this era that year, I could still like enjoy and stuff. But yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll show the replay to this event and then we'll end the episode. Um, I did like touch on the soundtrack a little bit. Um, outside of the racing, um, it's like really chill and I love it. Like a lot of people gush about, you know, the soundtrack for the menus and stuff. It does have that air of nostalgia to it, which definitely helps. Um, yes, again, I do find this game very nostalgic. It's one of the games that, yeah, I probably find the most nostalgic, alongside, like, Pokemon Heart Gold, for example, so yeah. Or even Pokemon Black White 2 as well, because yeah, that game I also adore, so yeah. Um, so yeah, um, what else? But yeah, and yeah, the license song in this game too, yeah, unfortunately I can't show them off, but yeah, um, probably. But yeah, they're amazing too, um, there's one song in particular which, yeah, that'll be the main focus of the other video I upload today, because I, I'll show like some remixes of it that I also like to listen to. But yeah, um, but yeah, this game. <laughs> Like I said, um, I feel like also this game, it was mainly Burnout 3 when I played that as a kid as well. That really influenced my, um, that also really influenced my, um, music taste as well. Like, yeah, that's why I really love listening to rock and stuff back in the day. But nowadays, I also like some other types of music too, like the Eurobeat, obviously, so yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, So yeah, um, there's that. And yeah, like I said, <laughs> I definitely played this. I didn't actually get too far in this game as a child. I definitely want to do a lot more when, you know, I play this again. Like I said, I don't think I got super far in this game. I definitely didn't 100% it because yeah, there's some events that I know I wouldn't have done when I was a kid, so yeah. Um, but yeah, who knows, maybe I can do it. <laughs> if I can, that'll be one grand achievement. Like getting hundred percent in this game. That would definitely mean the world to me if I could do something like that. So yeah. Can I do it? We'll see.
It's never going to take all I can to do that. But hey, hopefully I also have a fun time doing it, because again, this game is so near and dear to me, so yeah. And there you go, that's the replay. And yeah, I can also use this for a fun too, because yeah, again, this game does look really nice. It still does look quite nice even nowadays. Remember, it came out in 2004, and it's probably one of the best looking PS2 racing games as well. So yeah, it definitely does look a lot nicer if you know, you can emulate a lot better than I can, but yeah. See, there's that. And now we got onto my brother's favorite part about the game, getting a prize card, because... <laughs> ah, no, there's something very funny about this. That he finds very funny about it. Then we have won the Sunday Cup again, or Bianchi A12 above. And it spins around. <laughs> again, that's also something that my brother likes for some reason. But anyway. So that'll be that. Let's go into our garage and I can show off the Order Bianchi. And here it is. It's uh yeah, it's um <laughs> a Sony Break Horse Pal little Super Mini basically, but I think it can compete in the lightweight K Car Cup, which is nice, because that doesn't require license either. Of course, my Skyline. GTS. If I upgrade it, I think I can take on the FR challenge, and then yeah, we'll definitely put a good foothold into the game as well, so yeah. But yeah, I didn't actually talk about the photo mode, but yeah, that's also like another big thing about this game too. So yeah. And yeah, I've now done 0.8% of the game now, so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, definitely I've only just made a start, haven't I? So yeah. And you also have a diary too. Showing off what you have done. So yeah, I'm gonna call it here. So yeah, next time... I think it might be a feature, we'll see. Um, I'll see if I can, um, you know, um, I'll see if that will be the game I decide to, um, I'll see if that is the game I decide to, you know, um, what should I say? I think that will be the, that will be the game I do in my next video, hopefully, we'll see. Um, but yeah, look forward to what I have in store next, and yeah, I'll see you guys again for that.